great to have you with us for round two of the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. Tonight's racing kicks off at Silverstone in the UK. And if you haven't heard, we have F1 driver Max Verstappen on the grid as our international wildcard. For more on the stats that matter for race one tonight, here's Neil Crompton in the Hino Hub. With one of the all, with one of the all-time Grand Prix racing circuits, race number four of this championship series in round number two, seven laps the sprint race journey here, a little over 41 kilometres, and this track is 5.9 kilometres. It's complex. It's 18 turns. It'll be around about 14 minutes of racing, and if there is a safety car intervention, Jess, it'll be time certain at 15 minutes. You saw some of the fuel stats there a moment ago. This is a straightforward sprint race. If you do have to go through the pit lane, it'll take around about 20 odd seconds just to be able to transit it. You can see where the hot spots are here. Fundamentally, in all of the slow corners from those high speed approaches in 1, 3, 6, 15, and 16. Some of the most famous names in Grand Prix racing and motor racing circuits around the world here. Now, here are the race considerations. To win this race represents 75 points. The setup on the cars is frozen across the entire field. The weather's locked. It's an ideal 18 degrees. I don't always get that at Silverstone. Now, the track state's going to vary because it will rubber up as they transit the race through the journey. And just as it is in reality, the tyres will start cold. Those Dunlop tyres will also wear. You have to nurse them. 75 valuable points on offer in this one and there's only 75 points between first and fifth in the championship at the moment. You can see everyone locked and loaded as we count down to the race start. Maddie, as we take a look at how they'll line up on our truck assist starting grid, Anton Di Pasquale, as we said, with a point to prove tonight, got a couple of poles to his name so far in this E-Series. Absolutely. You talked about upping the ante in the wildcard driver department with Max Verstappen. What about upping the game in the simulator department as well as we just saw in that shot? Everybody stepped up their sim. So front row of the grid, Di Pasquale and McLaughlin, Shane Van Gisberg and Chaz Mostert, positions three and four. There is Max Verstappen. 102 Formula One starts. He's still just 22 years of age. He has qualified inside the top 10. Lee Holdsworth and Jack LeBrock, who was a winner in round one. Jake Kostecki and Cameron Waters. Position 11 goes to Will Brown, who's subbing in for David Reynolds this evening in the Penrite Racing Commodore. Bryce Fullwood and Gary Jacobson. 13 and 14. Then it's Fabian Coulthard. He's had experience here at Silverstone. Quite a few drivers, in fact, also have. Will Davison, as you mentioned, Scotty Pye, Zane Goddard, and Anton Di Pasquale. Alex Davison is alongside Rick Kelly, who has really rejigged his setup down on the Mornington Peninsula. Jack Smith from 21. Chris Pitha, position 22. Macaulay Jones, 23. It still spins me out to say Jamie Winkup right down the back of the field in position number 24. Todd Hazelwood and Will Davison. So this evening on the Truck Assist start grid, we'll have 26 drivers for this 5.891 kilometre circuit. And we go racing supercars virtually for the very first time at Silverstone in the UK. And from the pole position, a great start by Di Pasquale. Trouble at the back of the pack, not unsurprising. Cold tyres and particularly into these slow corners, that's going to be an issue. Win Cup battling with Cam Waters. Oh, somebody's turned around already, Crompo. We'll go back and find that. But look at this, Van Gisbergen hunting down McLaughlin, who is hunting down Anton Di Pasquale. So a good start from the pole sitter. He has a look on the inside in the Shell V Power Racing Mustang. He won't get the job done there. Positions stay the same. Max Verstappen looks as though he's climbed up a spot or two. He has. So he's trying to get on the tail of Van Gisbergen. Bump, bump and grind. But Di Pasquale doesn't fall for that. Certainly having some track knowledge at this location, having been here five times in the case of Verstappen is going to help the cause. He's already moved up one spot into fourth position. Great battle going on here between Van Gisbergen, who now tries to make a move. He's got a better exit than McLaughlin, and this is going to challenge him. He's on the wrong side of the road for the next left-hander, but he does make it stick and runs wide. So this is going to cost him on the exit, but he's got the ideal blocking position here. But McLaughlin forces the issue. These two have got the elbows up. Verstappen takes an advantage, though, through on the inside. And in one manoeuvre, up to position number two for the Dutchman. He was waiting for it, wasn't he? He was waiting for McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen to trip each other up. He's been here too many times to see that gap. It wasn't 
huge, but it was big enough for somebody like Max Verstappen. This tangle continues. Joining them now is both Heimgartner and Mostert. So it's Di Pasquale leading Max Verstappen. Van Gisbergen third, McLaughlin, Heimgartner in fifth, Mostert is sixth, Gary Jacobson seventh. Jake Kostecki has just dropped a couple of spots. So Nick Perkat, Zane Goddard and Will Davison make up our top ten. Great opportunistic move by Max Verstappen, who on just his second visit to the British Grand Prix early in his Grand Prix career, he got onto the podium in position number two and he's already got some fresh air around that car. So he sets off on the task of trying to close down the margin on Anton Di Pasquale. We've got off to a ropey start in our first three races. Bunnings trade power pass. Let's have a look at this one. We're riding with Chas Mostert for Mobile One Racing and Appliances Online. And how's that wow. for a quick blink of the eyelids? And straight down the inside in the fresh air goes Max Verstappen, moving from fourth straight up into second in the Red Bull Holden Racing Team Commodore. Nice job. You're riding on board with Chas Mostert. He's having a pretty good duel here with Andre Heimgartner in the Ned Mustang. Try to get through that last right-hander at turn 18 flat is something of a challenge. These cars are heavy. As I said before, they've got a high centre of gravity. They don't have, in international and global motor racing terms, a lot of aero. They're right on the teetering edge as they try and ease them through their flat. And we've seen already in qualifying and in practice earlier on, a lot of drivers having a battle trying to get through their easy flat. Battle here between Andre Heimgartner, who sent out an SOS earlier in the week that he had junky old computer equipment that was glitching. So the remarkable thing for me is that in virtual terms, it's exactly like it is in reality where drivers start talking about gear. Give me better stuff was the catch cry. Give me the gear and I'll get the job done. So the Ned Racing Mustang on the outside of Chas Mostert. Great battle here with Anton Di Pasquale leading in the first sprint race of the evening from Max Verstappen, Shane Van Gisbergen, Scotty McLaughlin, great battle here through the tight corner and the left-hander in second gear. Heimgartner and Mostert absolutely at it. Behind them is Gary Jacobson, who continues to do a great job for Matt Stone Racing, and then Nick Perkat for Brad Jones Racing. Will Davison, followed then by Zane Goddard. That's our top ten. Bottom right-hand corner of screen, Chas Mostert, Andre Heimgartner. They are the drivers that are on screen at the moment. Andre had a fourth, fifth and sixth in round one, and Chaz had a ninth, a second and a third in the first three races of the BP Supercars All-Star Series. Didn't take long, did it, for Max Verstappen to announce his presence in this category. Hilarious to hear him talk to you, Jess, earlier, where he said what every driver says, just give me more grip. It doesn't matter if it's a Formula One car, if it's a supercar, if it's an online car, I just want more grip. And talking about the difficulty of the throttle blipping, uh, which with the supercar you need to do with the downshift, but with, with the Formula One car and the paddle shift, it's all pre programmed. So looking rearward now towards Chas Mostert, track limits are something that get talked about a lot at this racetrack. That's through the final corner at turn 18, and then through this first flying right hander, 180 kilometres an hour at Abbey, and then the long sweeping left through two. And into three, this tight right-hander. It is a passing opportunity, but you've got to get it done cleanly. You must get up alongside cleanly, and that'll be something that Craig Baird talks about later on this evening. Giving racing room, respecting each other, and understanding that even in virtual terms, you've still got to play the game in an appropriate manner. We're riding here with Mostert. Has a look now. Gets the benefit of the draft, which is alive and real in iRacing, and gets down the inside of Heimgartner. So nice move on the Kiwi, and he does it cleanly. The order at the moment is Anton Di Pasquale from Max Verstappen. Shane Van Gisbergen's in a nice neat third, but these guys in fourth and fifth, correction, fifth and sixth, they've got a nice battle going. McLaughlin's still sitting in fourth, Chas Mostert, Andre Heimgartner next, and behind them, Gary Jacobson. The cars look good at this location. Complex racetrack, quite hard on tyres, they will be feeling the effects now that the Dunlop tyres are warm of tyre degradation. And certainly for the first three or four laps, that'll be noticeable. And then they will plateau somewhat. Mostert carries the brake a long way through the right-hander. And then in behind him now in the yellow cover, Matt Stone Racing Holden Commodore is Gary Jacobson, who also got off to a pretty good start 
13th in the championship after the first three races. Remember, there are championship points up for a win here, 75 of them. And we've got a developing battle between Verstappen and Van Gisbergen. And also Verstappen and Di Pasquale. So I've been watching the timing over the last lap, and it's drifted out Anton's lead somewhere between one and a half seconds back down now to 1.2 seconds. Max got as close as a second behind. He's got visual on Anton, so that's the first marker that he needs to know. He's got him in his sights. He's got Mostert on his tail as well. He's pressuring McLaughlin and Van Gisberg, and it didn't take long for these two to get together. Riding on board on the right-hand side, Red Bull Holden racer of Shane Van Gisbergen. Sixth, seventh, 24th in the first three races. He coined the phrase demolition derby after Monza, and along with Anton Di Pasquale, didn't leave round one feeling all that good about themselves in the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. No matter where you're watching, around the world. We hope you're enjoying this. The first of four races this evening, two at Silverstone, two at Barcelona. They will be cracking. The Aston Martin Red Bull has been all liveried up for car number 33 of Max Verstappen. He first came to this circuit in 2015, spun off on lap three in Formula One. As Neil mentioned, was on the podium in 2016, finished third, ended up second after being promoted a penalty that was handed out to Nico Rosberg post-race. Keep in mind also that Van Gisbergen is not using his regular equipment. He's stuck in New Zealand at the moment as a result of what's going on all around the world. <laughs> He's just outside Auckland at his mum and dad's place. Dunlop curb cam shows us exactly how much of the track they use with a couple of extra millimetres involved there. And this margin continues to tighten up between the two Red Bull. Effectively teammates, even though the livery is somewhat different. So the livery on Max's car reflects the RB16 that Max should be driving in the 2020 World Formula One Championship. Remember, right at the commencement of the year, we had two three-day tests at Barcelona where we're going next in our E-Series racing this evening. And Max got off to a very strong start. He was second fastest in the second week of early season testing there in what should be, if we hopefully get back to racing at a point, a very competitive season for him in Formula One. Youngest man to start in Formula One. 17 years of age, youngest ever winner in Formula One history. He's only 22 right now. In fact, Crompo, he'd done more than half a season in Formula One before he got his road driver's license <laughs> on his 18th birthday. Well, it feels as though he's been around for a while. I and mean, when you talked about him being 22 years of age before, it kind of raises the eyebrows, doesn't it? But the son of Jos Verstappen, who achieved 106 Grand Prix starts. Max has got 102 to his credit, so he's about to overtake Dad in that department. His mum was also a very successful carter. Picking up Jack LeBrock here, Super Cheap Auto Racing Mustang. Winner of our second race in the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series earlier last week. Cam Waters and Jack LeBrock, teammates, bottom right-hand corner of a screen. So just checking out that margin to see whether, in fact, it's starting to close up even further between our race leader, Anton Di Pasquale, Max Verstappen, and indeed third place, Shane Van Gisbergen. Cam Waters, Monster Energy, Ford Mustang. Cam sitting down the order by 43 points in second in the championship after the first three races. And that margin has tightened up between second, third, and fourth. And what a ripping start for McLaughlin, not only in the supercars in the last couple of weeks, but also in IndyCars. We pick up Bryce Forward making a move down the inside of Scott Pye, who's got some racing experience at this location as well. And in behind him is Mark Winterbottom in the Urban Tools Holton Commodore. It's a nice move for Bryce Forward. That was for position 15. Scotty Pye won a race here in 2010 in British Formula Ford and finished second in a season ending round in British F3 in 2011. He's under a bit of pressure here. Back to the front we go. It's a 1.4 second lead for Anton Di Pasquale. He's just opened that margin up a little bit. So Max might have made a little mistake or he's having to cover somewhat from Shane Van Gisbergen here. So Verstappen uses a little bit more of the exit right across the edge of the racetrack here, but he's vulnerable now to Van Gisbergen because Shane is going to get the benefit of the toe tucked under the rear wing of the Commodore. And remember, how they finish this race is how they will start the next race, reverse grid. At the moment, position 26. Out of 
out there belongs to Mark Winterbottom. He's got him in 19th on our timer. The official timer has him down in 26. Here we are, looking out the rear and front. Rear of Max Verstappen and the front of Shane Van Gisbergen. Does he have enough time and enough space to be able to get a move on here? It'd be interesting to see whether or not on the hangar straight or perhaps even on the pit straight, whether he can get close enough to be able to get the benefit of the toe, Shane Van Gisbergen. They're on the last lap now. So it's a little under six kilometres, the final journey here to conclude the first ever E-Series supercar race with one of the grand old ladies of Grand Prix racing at Silverstone. Still tucked nicely in fourth position is Scott McLaughlin in the Shell V-Power Racing Mustang. There is also a dirty air effect with these cars. Now Di Pasquale is looking as though he may be safe, but the minor positions on the podium at the moment unresolved. McLaughlin has a glimpse at some data, thinks about it, turns it in early. Verstappen kicks up the dirt on the inside. There's the margin first to second. 1.55 seconds is that gap. What a ripping start for Max Verstappen. Supercar debut. So to the chequered flag and an outstanding drive this evening to get maximum points, 75 of them on the board for Anton Di Pasquale and Penrite Racing. Well done for the young Melbourneian. Beautiful job. And he makes amends for the difficult start last week and a tremendous drive by Max Verstappen. Shane Van Gisbergen for Red Bull also in third position and Scotty McLaughlin in fourth. Yeah, that's redemption for Anton Di Pasquale. He came into this E-Series as one of the standout favourites. As you mentioned, Crompo, he didn't have a lot of fun in round one. I think they've still got a half of this lap to go, Neil. I think we've got ourselves a little premature check and flag there, virtually speaking. So they're still out there. Yeah, Anton okay. does a lot of laps in this iRacing platform. Lucky it was only a virtual error. <laughs> All right, so the margin is 1.59 seconds. So Anton Di Pasquale has got a hefty margin and he's away and clear. And he is going to get the 75 points regardless of where we call it. So that is a nice job for him and congratulations. And that will put a smile back on his face. Excellent work over Max Verstappen for Red Bull. Shane Van Gisbergen for Red Bull, so it's Holden 1, 2 and 3. The first of the Ford Mustangs is Scott McLaughlin, followed by Chaz Mostert. Andre Heimgartner did a fine job to come home in sixth position. Then Gary Jacobson, Will Davis and Nick Perkat and Will Brown subbing for David Reynolds this evening in the top ten. BP ultimate results as we go through the field for you. Position 11 belongs to Zane Goddard. Alex Davison behind him, then Fabian Coulthard, Bryce Fullwood. Scotty Pye ended up in 16th. Not a good night for Cam Waters. Off the start here at Silverstone, Rick Kelly in 19th, Macaulay Jones 21st. Remember, these positions will flip for the next race, which will be a reverse grid. So race five coming up nine laps. As we check out the Koala race highlights, great start from Anton Di Pasquale from pole position. He maintained that position. Verstappen went aggressive straight off. He had a look on the outside of Chaz Mostert towards the pit wall. There was that contact that we saw at the first turn. A few cars just spearing off. Gary Jacobson maintained his composure. Cam Waters diving out of the way. Watch this from Verstappen. Beautifully done on the inside. Saw the gap, did it cleanly. Got up into second position, which he would hold for the rest of the race. McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen swapping paint, getting wheels out onto the dirt, but staying on this circuit. The Dunlop curb cam's excellent. What a great view. But what a drive from Anton Di Pasquale, the Penrite racer. Had his game face on this evening and he's made amends to get his first victory in the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series and a crucial 75 points. He was 16th in the championship heading into that. So he'll move up considerably. Reverse grid race next, Jess. Can't wait for this.